The NFL Draft is done and over, and I am going to be breaking down each and every team and grading out their draft. So check back every day because one team I will do every single day, and I'll have it up here on YouTube for you to watch. We'll go over every prospect that they drafted as well as some key undrafted free agents that they may bring in. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section, and I'll be sure to address them for you. Also, just be aware of my draft grades. No one fails the draft, especially right after it. Even no one in this draft is going to get a D or an F from me because they, everyone had a talent. Everyone did something. So if you think the grades are a little bit high, that's just me not going to too much extremes. And maybe in three or four years when we look back on this draft, then we can see who really succeeded and who really failed. So sit back, relax, enjoy me as I break down every single team this year. Draft expert Shane Hallam shows off his knowledge. Writing mock drafts, prospects from the best college. Breaking down tape, he might develop a man crush. Tearing up guys, taking questions in a rush. Comparisons, learning lessons. Shane saves the day, oy vey. Hulk or banner, doesn't matter. Listen, cause here's who can play. We're gonna start off with the Cleveland Browns, and the Cleveland Browns were picking number seven. They took Joe Hayden, cornerback out of Florida. And this was my favorite cornerback in the draft. Hayden's a guy you watch the tape face some of the toughest corners in the SEC and in the country. And he did a very, very good job. He's high athletic ability. The big question was speed with him. And at the combine, he didn't show up, didn't have the best technique in his 40 time, but he came through in his pro day. You could see that the Browns were very comfortable with that. Now, they did trade for Sheldon Brown, so I was a little bit surprised by this pick. thought maybe they'd go with a Derek Morgan, get a pass rusher in there. They, so I, I'm, I'm, I like the pick. I like Joe Hayden. I think he's going to be a star in this league. I just wonder about position for them. So I can't knock him for that one. The second, the first pick they had in the second round surprised me a lot. And that was TJ Ward, safety out of Oregon. This is a guy I had as more of a later round pick, more of an in-the-box safety. He's lays the lumber, big hits. I was not very impressed with his midfield ability, his playmaking ability. He got lost at times. He got beat at times. So it looks like they're going to try him a free safety. And I don't think that's a very good fit. Not a big TJ Ward fan. I thought it was a bit of a reach. I don't think he's going to make it in the NFL as a free safety. I think he's more like Patrick Chung, another guy to come out of that system, strong safety, make those tackles in the box. And, and even though the Browns do need that, I thought it was a little high for a player of this caliber. Now, their other second-round pick, I loved Montario Hardesty out of Tennessee, a guy I've been talking up for a while now. He's very, very athletic. He has great vision. He started a senior year, held off star freshman Bryce Brown in Tennessee, and he's a perfect one cut back. He has great vision. He can see the hole. He can hit the hole well. Uh, so I think he's someone that's going to push Jerome Harrison. You're one for playing time. James Davis is going to be looking uh, behind him because it's going to be Ontario Hardesty. As long as he stays healthy, health's been the concern of his for years, but he stayed healthy this year. Full time starter, Tennessee. Really love that pick. In the third, they got Colt McCoy, quarterback out of Texas. A lot of people thought they would pull the trigger in the second. They waited, they were rewarded. I like Colt McCoy's fit in the offense. I still don't know if Colt McCoy is an NFL starting quarterback. Not quite convinced of that yet, but if there's a place he can do it, it's with Mangini and Holmgren in Cleveland. That system fits his style. Very accurate. Doesn't throw balls on a rope, but he's a winner. He's a winner, and you got to like that. you got to like what he brings to the table in that system. And also in the third, they took Sean Laval, offensive guard out of Arizona State, a very underrated player. So I was I like, glad to see him here because – this is somewhere the Browns needed a bit more depth interior line. Sean Laval's a guy you watch. Doesn't look he doesn't look like he has the biggest strength. He doesn't look like he's gonna push guys over, but he gets a push, and he's very athletic because of that. He gets a push, even though he doesn't look like he will. His strength number is very underrated. I think he'll be a solid reserve guard for them. Maybe someone that can step up in a starting role in a couple years. In the fifth, they drafted another guy I like, Larry Asante, safety out of Nebraska. I like Larry Asante. I thought he'd be a third-round pick, maybe even a second-round pick. Uh, I hear some talk about the Bengals, but they just took T.J. Ward, and they take Larry Santi. Two guys I think have a very similar skill set, 
Looks like they're going to play them in different positions. I, I don't love that. So fifth round pick, I'm not going to knock it because I think they got good value. But why are you really addressing the safety position twice when you could look other ways? Six, they got Carlton Mitchell, wide receiver at USF. Guy I'm not a huge fan of. He was rising up draft boards, some talk a second or third round. He fell because he doesn't know how to catch the ball. He's very raw, one year starting experience, but he's big, he's fast, gets down the field, hits that nine route. The problem is he, he drops half the balls he gets. He uses his body for nearly every catch. I've never seen him make a straight uh, hands catch. It's always created up against his body. He lets it hit his body first and then catches it. That's a tough, tough thing to break in the NFL, and we've seen great wide receivers, the Rashawn Woods, the, the guys that have busted out because of this issue. So I'm not sure he's going to add anything. In the sixth round, they also got Clifton Gaithers, defensive end out of South Carolina, a good five-technique player, high upside, very athletic. So I, I like that pick as well. I think Gaithers is a guy that can come in as a reserve and make the team. So I just didn't see the Browns get their number one need. So I'm going to give them a B-minus grade. The reason here... I think they got good players. I think they went hardcore secondary, which I can understand. I really dislike the TJ Ward pick. That brought this grade down for me. They didn't get a pass rusher in this draft after trading away Cameron Wimbley. And I, are you comfortable with Chris Gokong, who you just traded for? I don't think I am. And I would not be if I hadn't seen him in a 3-4 yet. So I think the Browns are going to lack the pass rush. I don't think this secondary is going to be able to make up for the pass rush. I think it's going to be another year of struggles for Cleveland. This is a draft that could work out down the line. If Colt McCoy works out, Joe Hayden works out, if one of these safeties work out, then you could at least get those three starters plus Montario Hardesty, who I think is going to be a great fit year one. So starters could definitely come out of this draft, but I think it was a risky draft. I don't think they addressed what they needed to address. If I was Cleveland, I would have waited on safety. You got Asante in the fifth. I would use that second-round pick for a solid pass rusher. And then I think that would have been a much better draft for them. In terms of undrafted free agents, they did pretty well. Two guys I really like. Casey Bender, offensive lineman out of South Dakota State University. This is a guy that can play offensive guard, can play offensive tackle. They need those reserve interior linemen. So he's a guy I think that can make the team. Small school prospect. And also Austin English, defensive end out of Oklahoma. Didn't get drafted. He was kind of pushed back because of all the talent on the Oklahoma defensive line, the Beals and McCoys and Grangers. But I think Austin English is a guy that has a shot at making a team. You just don't have the tape on him to see. But when he played, he was very, very effective for a very good Sooners defense. So uh, I think he's a pass rusher. Something Cleveland needs, I think we'll have a shot at making the team. So B- minus great for Cleveland as a whole. Thank you guys for watching again. One team every day. Tomorrow we got the Denver Broncos. Very controversial draft, and we'll be talking about them, so stay tuned.